Hey guys, my name is Colton Steiner, coming at you with another CSBR, and also coming at you with another loss. The Cleveland Browns took on the Baltimore Ravens, and like last week, we were disappointed and came out with a loss. Again, like last year, 0-2. Woohoo! Great start, boys! Okay, first off, let's talk about the score. Browns would lose 24-10 to to the Ravens, and it was just kind of an ugly game all around. There wasn't really anything going well for the Browns. Browns would total up 386 yards to the Ravens, 337. And here are some stats. Kaiser went 15 of 31 for 183 yards with three interceptions and a fumble. And his backup, Kevin Hogan, would come in, who would go 5'11 for 118 yards with a touchdown and an interception. So there was a lot of turnovers, and yeah, it was just ugly. On the bright side, there was a couple good things. Rashard Higgins, Hollywood Higgins, would have seven receptions for 95 yards. But here are some things I want to see on offense. I want to see more of Seth DeValve. We need to start using our tight ends more. We have some great tight ends with Seth DeValve and David Njoku, who caught his first career touchdown pass. So congratulations, David. But something we need to start working on is clock management. The last two games have been very poor, especially last week against the Steelers in the final two minutes. And this week, there was just some bad decision-making on offense and some bad clock management. And with clock management, that is kind of a big thing, especially in the league. And you can't make little mistakes. Like last week, we called a timeout, challenged, lost a challenge, and then lost another timeout. So I don't get, if you're going to challenge, don't call a timeout. Because that's a, that's a risk you don't want to take. And it's just don't be stupid when it comes to clock management. Because it's not that hard. Just be smart. Be, make common sense, people. It's not a hard thing to do. But also play calling. Le okay, let's see. First goal, first in goal at the five-yard line. And we're doing a QB sneak with Kaiser. I, I'm not a fan of that. I, I would much rather have run Crowell or... Duke Johnson, because Duke Johnson had a great run that got us inside the 10-yard line, and that that set us up for first and goal. And then Kaiser goes and throws a pick, and we will talk about him in a little later. Let's talk about time possession. Browns would have the ball for 26 minutes to the Ravens' 33, and I think that's something to keep note of. It's not a big difference, but when you have the Browns who are have the ball for two to three minutes, that isn't much time to give the defense to rest. And I thought our defense would actually play pretty well considering the score. Our defense would be led by Jamar T Haler with eight tackles and one assisted tackle and Christian Kirksey, who would have six tackles, three assisted tackle and a sack. But here, here's something I would like us to see. First of all, we need to get up on our receivers. There were way too many times, especially in this game where they short passes. That's what killed us. We would play so far off the receiver that they would just make a little slant cut or a little screen, and that would go for 10, 15 yards, sometimes even more. And plays like those are just are, are killers on drives because say you're at third and long and you get a little slant pass to that like that and you're playing 20 yards down the field, that you only – they only need seven yards, so they're not going to go for 15. Sense-wise, common sense would say that. So you, I don't see why our players are playing so far down the field that it just doesn't make sense to me. I think we should need to play more up on the players, and actually we saw more of that later in the game, and it kind of worked. They, didn't really, they only got three points in the fourth quarter, and that was off a field goal. Our offense was trash. Yeah, absolute trash. Let's let, – it's – we – our receivers need to learn to catch the freaking ball. It, it's something you you have to do when you're a receiver in the NFL. In the National Football League, you get paid millions of dollars just to catch a ball. You need to do that. The Browns don't do that. And that's what frustrates I me. Mean, we need a true number one receiver. And we haven't had that since Josh Gordon. And something we need to do this offseason or even in this season is get that number one receiver, whether it's by trade or something. We have draft picks. Heck, we even have a couple players we could give up. I would not mind moving on from Corey Coleman because he just doesn't seem to fit in, in this offense. We need a receiver like Terrell Pryor was last year. He worked in our system. Now, 
Let's talk about Deshaun Kaiser. Before I go on my rant, I want to say this. He has some great parts of his game. He has a lot of good things going for him. He has He's a mobile quarterback. He's a young player, which I said last week. He has a lot of area to improve. But this is why I didn't want him to start the season. Now, I want to say this. I, I, I thought he... I was kind of expecting this to come, whether it was this week or a couple games down the road. This, this doesn't surprise me at all, Mo- mainly because he's a rookie quarterback. I didn't think he was ready in the preseason, and I still don't think he's ready. That's why I wanted to go with Kessler. I think Kessler is kind of underrated as a quarterback. He's not, he's not a deep threat, but he's accurate. And he, I thought his long ball is better this year, to be honest, than it was last year. Sure, Kessler wasn't the guy. We saw that this year, and I, I, I admitted I didn't think he was going to be the guy on my Twitter. I didn't think he's the guy for the future. I don't think Kessler is going to be on the Browns come, fi- come four or five years into his career. But just throwing a rookie into an offense and with no NFL experience is going to be rough for him. And he has to understand that. And... When I wish they would have actually benched him after he threw the interception in the red zone. Because when that happened, I was like, crap. We, had a, we have a shot to score here, and he just throws a horrible pass that was way off target. Play calling there was iffy, to be honest, too. So I didn't. I wish we would have ran the ball, but that, that's not my business. When I say I want Ke- wanted Kessler to start, I didn't say that. I don't mean the entire season. Obviously, I wouldn't mind having Kessler in there for the first three, four games, like I said, and then just throw Kaiser in there a couple plays. See, see what happens. We saw that last year with Jared Goff, and when the Rams were playing him, they they didn't start him. They they leaned him into the season, and I think he's gonna have a. I think he's gonna have a pretty good career, and. I kind of wish we would have done that with Kaiser. I, I don't think Kaiser is NFL ready yet. And while some guys can, you can throw him in their offense and he can, they can excel like Carson Wentz was doing last year and into this year, I don't think Kaiser is that guy. I hope he is. I hope he is. That is something I really hope he continues to get better. But, well, as much as I hated Kaiser, watching Kaiser in this game and wanted him to get benched, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, I want to roast on him more because I think the Browns actually had a chance to win this game, but he was going up a gra- great defense. I'll give the Ra- Ravens credit. They are a really good defense. Terrell Suggs, one of the one of the best defensive players in the NFL. But you got you got to convert. You're in the NFL. It's it's the big boys now. It's, it, you aren't playing against the toddlers on the playground and tearing up the little college game this is this is the big leagues you got to show up thank you guys for watching the cleveland browns play the indianapolis colts next week in indianapolis at one o'clock on cbs and hopefully for it's going to be a better day so we've seen we've seen worse game, better games than this definitely for sure because this was a this was terrible <laughs> but the colts aren't looking that gr- good right now so that's that's a positive but Thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. That'll be right up here in this corner over here. And tell me about your thoughts on this game in the comments below. If you want to be follow me on all my social media, links are in the description. But thank you guys for watching. I love the Cleveland Browns. And I'll see you guys next week.